needs to really re-examine it because more often you will find that somebody is sent for mental assessment after he has uh, committed a crime. Then you are now sending this person for mental assessment. Why can't we preempt that by having annual or even by annual mental assessments on everybody carrying NFIM, whether you are civilian or even soldiers who are carrying firearms. Because firearm in anybody holding it, you are human. And you are capable of uh, having, a, maybe even through drinking. We've seen cases where people have taken alcohol and decided to square it out because he is armed. So I think it is something that the committee should examine widely and see how best that can be done as they make the amendment. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Well, the last one, member for Rangwe. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Honorable Speaker. I want to give my contribution on the second petition, uh, especially when it comes to issuance of uh, firearm license. Uh, there is a proposal that uh, there is a psychiatric review. I think this is a matter that is already uh, in practice. Uh, the petitioner is looking just for its anchorage in law. But I would uh, propose that we not, not uh, only look at psychiatric review, but it would be important that we also include the review of a clinical psychologist because uh, the accusations here would be on a matter that is of felony, and this is a very, very serious offense. And we, uh, we also need to define in law what constitutes self-defense because the way you have already indicated, there is a sense of power that uh, these uh, licensed uh, firearm holders normally have and there is normally a tendency to misbehave with a firearm. So it is important that this uh, matter is uh, considered in this house and at the committee level, and a report is given even for uh, de uh, debating where they need to defend the lives of others. So this is a very uh, good... Uh, and take a seat. The member making his way, are you, you, why don't you just sit? Yes. On our members, uh, I indicated that I was going to make this, um, deliver this message from the president. I wish to report to the House that I have uh, received a message from His Excellency the President conveying his nomination of Dr. Jamlek Muturi John. PhD and Mr. Tom Alfred Otieno Oyucho for appointment as a chairperson and a member of the Teacher Service Commission, respectively. Such as the President having exercised his powers under Article 250, Clause 2, Paragraph B of the Constitution, as read together with, it, with Section 8, Subsection 7 of the Teacher Service Commission Act Number 20 of 2012, is now seeking the approval of the National Assembly on the appointment of the two persons as chairperson and member, respectively, of the Teacher Service Commission. Honorable members, standing order 45 requires that upon receipt of notice of nomination for appointment of a person to such office, the nomination shall stand committed to the relevant departmental committee of the House for consideration. Further, Section 8, Subsection 8 of the Teacher Service Commission Act Number 20 of 2012 requires the National Assembly to either approve or reject the nominees to the positions within 21 days of its sittings. In this regard, honorable members, as well as the provisions of, of the same law and paragraph three of the standing order number 42 relating to messages from the president, I hereby refer the message together with the curriculum vitae of the two nominees to the Departmental Committee on Education and Research for the committee to undertake the necessary approval hearings. The committee should notify the nominees and the general public of the time and place for holding the approval hearings, and upon conclusion of the hearings, table their report in the House in good time to enable the House to consider the matter within the stipulated timelines. I thank you, honorable members. Next order. Order number five, papers. Leader of majority, Navi. Uh, Chairperson, committee on... Uh, Regional integration. 
Tu nak bawa ahli wario. I thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following papers on the table of the House today, Tuesday, March 30, 2021. Reports of the Select Committee on Regional Integration on its consideration of the South African Legislative Assemblies. Reports. One, the Committee on Regional Affairs and Conflict Resolution on the oversight activities on the proliferation of small arms and light weapons in the East African region. Two, the Committee on Agriculture, Tourism and Natural Resource, Resources on the oversight activity on the performance of tourism sector in the region, 9th to 12th September 2019. Third, the Committee on Accounts on its oversight activity on the Lake Victoria Basin Commission to assess the status of implementation of the Assembly's recommendation on the EAC audited accounts. Fourth, the Committee on General Purpose on the Oversight Activity to assess the level of preparedness of the partner states in the management of Ebola and dengue fever epidemics. And finally, Mr. Speaker, the Committee on General Purpose on the petition from the East African Civil Society Organization Forum, ESCOF, on the matters of crucial importance to the community. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Uh, the Chairman, Departmental Committee on Communication, Information, and Inno Innovation. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to lay the following paper on the table of the House today, Tuesday, March 30, 2021, afternoon sitting. Report of the Departmental Committee on Communication and Innovation information and innovation on its consideration of a petition regarding removal from office of Ms. Dabitha Muthemi as a member of the Media Council of Kenya. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Next order. Order number six, notices of motion. Leader Majority. Uh, Honorable Speaker, I beg to uh, give notice of the following motion that pursuant to the provisions of studying order number 284 this house resolves to further alter its calendar uh, regular sessions for the fifth session uh, 2021 as adopted on wednesday february the 10th 2021 and amended on tuesday march 9 2021 so as to a suspend its sitting of tuesday evening uh, march uh, 30th, 2021. B, suspend all its ordinary sittings from Thursday, 1st of April, 2021 to Thursday, 29th of April, 2021. And C, resume its regular sittings on Tuesday, the 4th of May, 2021 at 2.30 p.m. to continue with the first part of the session. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Uh, just a notice Next, uh, the, chair, the chairman, departmental committee on communication, information, and on our members. Uh, I do appreciate that uh, yeah, those of you who are historians will recall a famous statement by the late Professor Ali Mazrui when uh, he stated that as, as independence approached, the term East Africa shrank in meaning. It looks to me that uh, as the year 2022 approaches, the quorum uh, in the house is diminishing in meaning. So why don't you just uh, you, you because this just notice? Yes. Why don't you you'll, you'll have an opportunity to say whatever it is you want to say. So so there's no there's no, no there's no point uh, to to start uh, shouting and I mean it's the decorum. The Honorable Chris, Christopher Mulele. I thought you had given me some time to move to oh, give notice. Honorable Kisan. Yes. You haven't finished. No, Please. you have not even started. Oh, yes, okay. okay. Proceed. Okay. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Honorable Speaker, I beg to give notice of the following motion. 
that taking into consideration the findings of the Departmental Committee on Communication Innovation in its report on the as consideration of a petition regarding removal from office of Ms. Dabitha Muthemi as a member of the Media Council of Kenya, laid on the table of the House today, March 30th in the afternoon, and pursuant to the provisions of, the, of Section 14.3 of the Media Council Act 2013, this House recommends the removal of Ms. Dabitha Muthemi as a member of the Media Council of Kenya. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. Um, I'm informed that the Honorable Mulele is uh, not in the house, so we skip his uh, notice. Move to the next order. Order number seven, questions and statements. First segment on questions. First question, the... Uh, by the Honorable uh, John Bundy, no, leader of the minority party. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, allow me to ask question number 141 of 2021 on the order paper, and this is pursuant to standing order number 42A5. And Mr. Speaker, this question goes to the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure, Housing, Urban Development and Public Works. Is the Cabinet Secretary aware that a number of contractors awarded various contracts across the country to improve roads to bitumen standards have stopped works due to non-payment and in particular the contractor who was awarded the Mbita Sindo Magunga Golomok Road in Oma Bay County where the construction has stalled due to failure by the Ministry to make full advance payments for mobilization. Number two, what measures is the Ministry undertaking to ensure that construction of the Mbita Sindo Magunga Golomok Road is carried out expeditiously and completed within the stipulated period captured by the contract? And three, what immediate intervention measures is the Ministry putting in place to ensure that the said road, which is currently in a deplorable state, is restored to motorable status? Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The question will be responded, replied to before the Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing. Next question by the member for Njoro, Honorable Charity Chepkwon. Member for Njoro. Member for Njoro, the Honorable Chepkwon, Charity, Kadambi. Next question by the member for Kinango, the Honorable Tayari. Benjamin. Oh, no, remember, when you, when you have questions, you, you press your intervention button. Maybe you can use the, the dispatch box. Then you are, you are in some place that. Uh... No, let, just come in front. You know, as an elected leader, don't don't fear people seeing you. In full. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to ask question number 095 of 2021, 
Director to the Cabinet Secretary for Transport, Infrastructure, Housing and Urban Development. One, could the Cabinet Secretary provide a progress report on the efforts made to compensate the resident fishermen who were affected and displaced by the construction of the Dongokundu Bypass in Kinango constituency and who are categorized as persons affected by project. Two, when will the ministry pay the said persons their compensation and also factor in the, infl in the infl inflationary charges from the time they were displaced to date? I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Respond, reply to before the Committee on Transport, Public Works and Housing. Next question by the member for Mwingi Central. 